Hello, everybody, and I, I really appreciate you joining me. I really understand what it is to commit it even an hour to a program for all of you, and I have to tell you, this is probably one of my favorite programs um, to share with the audience because so much of what we do in our practice um, can be almost, let's just say, many companies have products that are Me Too or similar products, and tonight I'm going to introduce you to a product that changed how I cement, uh, changed how I deliver crowns, um, how I deliver implants, and I'm going to get into all that tonight. Uh, it's I would say that openly I put in almost 400 units of crown and bridge in the last three years. I'm a very conservative dentist. I don't crown teeth every day. Um, and we'll get into why this is such an efficient cement. And really, I'll go through a variety of different techniques tonight, and we'll get started. Much of what we're doing today deals with monolithics, uh, zirconia or dilithium silicates, aka Emax or Emax derivatives at this point. There's layered ceramics, which I'll get into tonight also. Zirconia to porcelain, dilithium to porcelain, and metal substrate to porcelain, PFMs. I don't do a lot of PFMs anymore, nothing negative. Um, I do a tremendous amount of zirconia and zirconia to porcelain, which I'll explain why tonight also. Um, yeah, I'm just going to move on and let you all enjoy, I hope. So the question really is, what do you cement with? <clears throat> and, you know, Progressive Dentist is a magazine about efficiency and time. How, how do you really make things efficient in your practice and deliver what I call a B plus, an A minus, or an A restoration? And that's what really tonight's all about. I'm going to walk through it, but at my last uh, lecture just two weeks ago, <clears throat> I asked Dennis, how long do you book on, how long do you plan your schedule for cementation of a crown? And in the audience, the average answer was without a doubt a half an hour, some 45 minutes, um, a few were 15 minutes, but most were 30 or 45 minutes. And honestly, I got to say, are you kidding me? 30 or 45 minutes is a tremendous amount of time. On my schedule, I couldn't even imagine being in the room 10 or 15 minutes to cement a crown. And you're going to see why. I'm going to simplify the procedure for you. And even with that, um, I'm going to make your procedure even that much better with this product that we're going to get into. How important is your cement? <clears throat> this is uh, a friend of mine. She came in four weeks ago, and I just take current pictures because I love sharing current cases, cases that were three months ago. A lot of them I, I already take out of my program because I just love to show new stuff. So this is my friend, Carrie. And she had porcelain and zirconia crowns put in 2009. Teeth 28, 29, and 30 all bonded into place. On x-ray, the margins looked fine. But that's on x-ray. We know how x-rays are. They were all adhesively cemented in Chicago. Uh, so <clears throat> I started taking off this crown. Why did I take it off? Because there were open contacts, food trapping. Uh, they were annoying her. I had already completed a tremendous amount of operative work on her. And uh, as I started to take off the crowns, this is what I see. Early decay wrapped around, all around the crown. All around the crown. And you go, why was there early decay? Why was there really only after four or five years in her mouth? And I'm going to tell you there's so much technique sensitivity to resin cements, and nobody wants to talk about it. There's so much manufacturers who are, who are pushing so much into resin cements for almost a decade now, and there are so many issues with them. So here's the question. I'm taking off tooth number 29. What do you do? I, there's wraparound decay on this. Same dentist did 28 and 29 and 30. So do you just leave 28 and 30? Do you tell the patient, well, you've got decay in this one. I can't see it on the x-ray. But you know if the dentist did all three, I'll almost guarantee there's decay like this on all three crowns. What caused the fracture in this six-year-old crown? Was it occlusion? You can see the you can see the fracture. Let me get my drawing out here. Let's see if this works. 
Maybe not. Mm. Now let's see. What caused this fracture? It's right there. What caused that fracture? Was it the cement? Was it the occlusion? Was it the lack of silane treatment on the ceramic prior to the cementation? Was it the bonding process in itself? And, and I think <clears throat> dentists don't pay enough attention to it. I mean, let's look at it this way. Look at the micro leakage down here. Look at this micro leakage. So did the crack cause this? Or did the micro leakage cause the crack, chicken or the egg? It's really quite interesting. And why would the bonding process cause this? I was at an AACD meeting a few years ago. Lecturer is doing a live program, cementing veneers. He starts flossing the veneers as he tack cured the veneers, and there's blood coming around the veneers. Are you going to tell me the blood doesn't create instant micro leakage on unset composite cement? Of course it does. So, I mean, we have to be talking about simp simplifying our procedures and it'll get even further into this. Because I want to show you a technique that again goes with this magazine's basis. Can we do things better, more efficiently, and time-saving? This is a six-year-old PFM. This was my PFM that I had cemented with a resin ionomer cement and my patient, Lou, his name's Lou, had fractured the porcelain. I said, just come on in. I'll just take off the crown. Do you think I'm happy when I see decay or let's call it leakage, micro leakage of these brownish areas in a six-year-old crown? Absolutely not. I mean, absolutely not. So RMGI probably one of the top two on the market. You can see the RMGI on the crown. I think my margins is, are as good as anybody. But that alone tells you how good is a margin. You know bacteria are so small, margins are 65 microns at best. So you got to count on a great cement. You have to count on a great cement. Where was my seal here? Let's talk about solubility. Really? Okay, I'm not really so sure you would be happy either. I certainly wasn't happy seeing this on just a six-year-old crown. Maybe if it was yours, I'd be okay, but not mine. So what's the holy grail of crown and bridge? I want a cement that seals and has a great retention. No question. I want a great seal, and I don't want it to come off. I want a cement that resists micro leakage and is acid resistant. I want a cement that has absolutely total or majority of inhibition of caries and plaque. I don't want it to be soluble. I want low solubility. I want it to be thin, and I want it to be very simple to apply. I want it to be easy to clean, which again gets back to the nature of progressive dentists. It's got to be an easy system, and I'm going to show you that. I want a system with long-term studies. I don't want a cement that fails. So, all of this becomes my holy grail in a cement. And I'm going to tell you tonight, you're going to see a total different cement. Nothing like it on the market. I've got almost 400 crowns in three years put into this. And there's nothing I'm going to cement in my own mouth that's going to be any different than this material. This is the material I'm going to be placing. It's a universal cement. I use it for PFMs. I use it for zirconia. And I use it for all ceramics. When wouldn't I use this? Right now, I don't use it for inlays and onlays. I don't use this cement for veneers. And I don't really use it if I've done a minimal prep anterior crown, which I don't do a lot of. So what I can tell you is the majority of my work is metal, zirconia, or all ceramics. And it's far more zirconia than anything else today. The cement I'm going to introduce you to is Ceramer. This is a unique calcium aluminate cement. I'm going to show you a few videos from some of the most brilliant minds, I would say, out of Sweden who were behind this product. I was in Sweden this past week. I was in Finland working on a project in Sweden. Stopped in Sweden to talk about this project itself. And let me tell you, I wouldn't be sharing this with you unless I thought this was something of such great significance for everybody um, on this webinar tonight and in all my lectures. This is a small Swedish company. Um, that truly is revolution, I think revolutionizing 
where we are in the cementation business as far as permanent cements. Let's listen. Now, if you can read Swedish, you're okay. I mean, if you can listen to Swedish, you're okay. I would just read the subtitles. Let's see if this works, Noah. Viktig är naturligtvis att materialet man använder inte krymper för att integreras med den tid man gjorde egentligen. Vad vi behöver är egentligen en ny typ av material som bättre harmonerar med tandvävnaderna och övriga vävnaderna i munhålan och som ger en stabil funktion över långa tidsperioder. Next one. The unique properties of Ceramere Crown and Bridge comes from tooth-like bioceramic nanotechnology. The hydrophilic material wets the tooth surface and nanocrystals begin to form. They precipitate on the tooth wall, on filler particles, and on any pre-existing crystals. This is how Ceramere Crown and Bridge integrates and achieves stability with tooth tissue. And we're going to get more into it. I just want to show you a couple of videos. Misslyckanden och komplikationer i samband med rekonstruktiv tandvård kan naturligtvis bero på många faktorer. Men om man tänker på den samlade kliniska erfarenheten och vad som beskrivs i litteraturen så är det framförallt materialfaktorer och då vanligtvis mekaniska haverier som sänker ett material i tillägg till att man får residiv i den sjukdom som en gång var orsaken till behandlingsbehovet. En karlsangripen tand kan naturligtvis repareras på många olika sätt. Det bästa vore naturligtvis att kunna remineralisera den bara. De material man sedan använder för att reparera tänder, de kan naturligtvis vara av många olika slag. Men de bör naturligtvis ligga när det gäller mekaniska och fysikaliska egenskaper så nära tanden som möjligt. Så so, the videos talk about remineralization. And you know, you talk about the MI pastes today. You talk about remineralizations, and this is where dentistry is going. Teeth aren't, as Bob Lowe would say, one of my best buddies, and he was with me in Sweden. Bob Lowe would say, teeth aren't made out of resin. So why are we using only resins? Teeth are made out of calcium and phosphates. And so that's what hydroxyapatite is. So think about it. Do we want to rebuild with hydroxyapatite type materials, or do we want to rebuild with resins? And I'm not anti-resin. I do composites every day. I rebuild smiles with resins. But as a cement, is that really my option? So let's just look at this. This is what we would almost call a permanent type seal of a tooth. Through the integration process, that's what we're looking for. Imagine creating new appetite when in contact with phosphates. This is what we would really look at as biomimetic dentistry, creating new tooth structure, and you'll see more as we go along. Shrinkage. We all know composite resins shrink, well, so do cements. So why wouldn't we think that you would have cement shrinkage at the margins, the most critical aspect of what you do with a crown? This has no shrinkage. This is the most comfortable cement I have ever utilized in my career. And when I say almost zero post-operative sensitivity, one patient in 400 of my patients commented that they could actually feel this. Routinely, routinely, zero sensitivity. So let me get into one key aspect here. You know, I understand we're talking about efficiency in the appointment, and I book 15 minutes, 15 minutes, for a delivery of a crown. And if you can't deliver 15 minutes of a, in a crown, I'm telling you, you need a new lab. That's my feeling. Whether you to do traditional impressions or digital impressions, your crown should fit in 15 minutes, be cemented in a total of 15 minutes and out the door. So let me just give you the classic scenario in my office. My patients come in. And when my patient comes in, my hygienist, my assistant will seat them, and my assistant takes off their temporary. I do not take off the temporary. Unless it's been a very difficult temporary, and we know this from our morning huddle, my assistant takes off the temporary. So the first thing I can tell you is my choice of a temporary cement is Cling 1 from Clinician's Choice. Cling 1, and the reason I love this, no matter what of any material is, 
99% of the material is always in the temporary, not on the tooth. I don't want it on the tooth. The only time it sticks to the tooth is if it sticks to the bonded composite buildup or the glass ionomer buildup, and then you just remove it or the assistant removes it. So Cling One from Clinician's Choice is absolutely my number one overall temporary material for my short-term temps. We won't even get into my long-term rehab patients. So my assistant cleans the patient's teeth. They don't need to be anesthetized. I don't want them anesthetized because I want to make sure my occlusion. So I walk in the room, and I'll show you how I adjust our uh, contacts, minor occlusal adjustment, and then I'm cementing my crown. My assistant's cleaning off the crown. She does final. I walk in, take a quick look. Routinely, we take an x-ray. My assistant takes the x-ray. So what am I doing? I'm adjusting the contact occlusion, inserting the crown. My total time is routinely less than seven minutes. And trust me, I want every margin to be as meticulous as possible. So let's continue on. The material itself is a bioceramic powder. It goes through a trituration process and get over it. You have to triturate it right now. And if you don't own a triturator, wait till you watch this. And I'm telling you, you're going to want to own a triturator. I do no amalgams in my practice, quite a bit of glass ionomer, so I own a triturator. So you triturate the material after activating it, and I'll show you the video. And these nanocrystals form on the wall. So as they form on the wall, they actually integrate into the dentin, as you can see in this picture. It's not a bonding to the wall. They integrate into the dentin. They create a seal on the dentin enamel interface, and that's exactly what you want. You want a seal and you want integration, and there's more. A sealed interface means less risk of secondary caries. And your worry is, is that when you go through acid attacks in the mouth, and we all go through acid attacks, but as you go through an acid attack, what will happen is there'll always be a little demineralization at the margin. There's no question. This material will actually remineralize and actually stop any breakdown or minimize any breakdown. And because you have no shrinkage, it gives you a stable interface. There's no other material on the market like this, and it is so simple to use. So simplicity is not a bad thing. I talk about the high alkaline pH. You know, another key product on the market is Theracal. Theracal made by Bisco. Again, it's an incredible liner. And to me, another biomimetic product that's got high alkaline. Why? It, it literally will stop acid-producing bacteria, kill acid-producing bacteria because it's alkaline in nature. So we want a permanent material that is alkaline in nature. As, I, as you look at the studies, one of the researchers that I have interacted with on this, in addition, to Jess, in addition to Jespar, who's the researcher, the main researcher out of Sweden, this is Cornelius Pommerger, who I met and we talked about this product. No, if you could play Cornelius's video, that should come up. Can you do that for me? This particular cement uh, has been researched in vitro and in vivo uh, very exhaustively. Taxa has really done their homework. I cannot think of any materials that I've tested over my 35-year career doing biocompatibility testing that is kinder to the pulp than Ceramurk. So you talk about a guy who, to me, does what I call quality research. This is a paper that came out by Steve Jeffries, Journal of Prosthodontics. No loss of retention, no secondary caries, no marginal discoloration. I've done 400 restorations, and I can tell you that my, my own observance of this is that this material follows this kind of three-year recall. I've had two Two restorations come out. They were on, of course, one of my assistant's husbands and another on a, another patient, both on teeth, either 31 or 17. Incredibly low retention preparations because there was no clinical height. I've used this on teeth that I literally used this as a temporary cement because I knew I had a patient coming in who was leaving for Mexico. Tooth was ravagely decayed. 
endodontically treated. They wanted their crown in the mouth. I cemented it with Serumer. They came back five, six weeks later when I can get them back in to redo, re, you know, obviously rebuild the tooth. I couldn't even remove the crown. There was no retention, and I had to literally drill off this old gold crown. So I can talk about retention, and you'll see about retention in an upcoming slide. The retention, as noted in this study, is as high as a self-etching cement like Unisem. So imagine if you don't have to go through the, the what I call moments when you place um, a self-adhesive cement. You have to remove a self-adhesive cement before it sets because if you don't, then it's stuck in the tissue for the rest of its life. Do you remove it too soon? It creates bleeding. You've all been there. You know exactly what I'm talking about. When I show you the beauty of the cleanup of this material in a Mike Detola video, and kudos to Mike making this filming, I can only tell you, you'll see why we use this every day. The working time on this material is basically of two minutes. You have about two minutes to get, in my eyes, up to six crowns into place. It takes about, no, I'd say three minutes to set and you start cleaning up in three minutes, its full set time is about five minutes. It's incredibly thin. I will tell you it is biocompatible. You'll see how I use this with it's the only cement I would ever use on implants. I will stress to you, the only cement. I do most of my work is either screw down, and I'll show you how all this works. And if I have to use a cement, this would be the only cement I would ever use. It's compressive strength only increases in time. Yes, it increases in time. And it's radio-opaque. Now, is it ideal for implants? No, I'd like them to even make this more radio-opaque for implants, but there is no translucency. The system, when you purchase it, and I think it's about $200, and that's how I learned about the system through our catapult review, comes in an intro pack with an activator or a plunger, a gun, and you need your own triturator. And I'm going to tell you, if you don't own a triturator, go get it out of the basement. You're going to want a triturator because if you want a crown cemented with the most superior product, you're going to need a triturator. The process basically involves activating the cement for three seconds. The video will show it. You triturate for five or eight seconds. And the reason there's a difference, it comes in two packaging, unidose, in, both in unidose. A single crown, a single unit, you triturate for five seconds. A multi-pack, you triturate literally for about eight seconds. And you can cement two bicuspids and a canine or maybe a molar and a bicuspid with a multi-pack. But you need to triturate it a little longer, eight seconds. So the process basically is you act, well, you don't do anything, seriously. Your, your assistant does it. Your assistant takes it out of the wrapping activates it for three seconds, puts it in the triturator for five or eight, and then when you get it out of the triturator, he or she will turn the nozzle to open the port, and then you place it in the crown. You inject the material in the crown. That's it. So let me just tell you what I do a lot of. In this case, I was evaluating fits for different systems. I would take, in this case, an Itero digital model, and I was also testing Densply's new cordless impression system, which I have to tell you, is quite unique, and I've had fantastic results with Densefly's new cordless system. So here's a case where zirconia preparation, I love it because it's like a gold crown preparation. Absolutely love zirconia. This is a cordless impression, no retraction. I just use Traxidens paste and Traxidens customized. They're one of three sizes for their Traxidens caps. Leave them in place two minutes. My assistant sets up the cordless. I take the impression, pour it up at the lab. And I do a lot of Itero, don't misunderstand me. And my assistant's now placing this beautiful, radio-opaque, nice and opaque cement, which I love, and we'll talk about that later. And here's your monolithic zirconia crown going in. So the set time is three minutes. I'll usually use two cotton rolls. Have the patient use like, you know, a cottonwood stick, bite down. Three minutes later, my assistant will walk in, floss down, usually tie a knot in the floss, pull the floss through, 
clean the margins and it's that simple so this is a monolithic crown and I, I'm telling you monolithics have become incredible they're now either stained before sintering so when you adjust the occlusion and polish the occlusion you don't lose the staining or the cores are video shaded Vita shaded these these have just come so far and you don't have to over prepare the teeth like you do for so many dilithiums and I'll show you dilithium cases because I still use dilithium also I want to show you this video from Mike this is Mike's video who's now with CR and I wish Mike all the you know luck in the world and best with him at CRA he was part of catapult initially um, Noah let's play this video from Mike Totola we begin by tearing open the foil pouch where indicated and removing the capsule. We take the capsule out and we put it into the activator with the tip away from the handle and we push down on the handle and we're going to hold it down for five seconds and then we take the capsule out and we're going to place it into the triturator. It really doesn't matter what triturator you use here. Uh, any triturator set to high speed will work well and you just want to make sure that you mix it for anywhere between uh, five and eight seconds to make sure that you've got it completely mixed. When the triturator is done we're going to remove the capsule and we're going to spin the tip around 180 degrees and put it into the applicator. From this point we have two minutes of working time to get the crown seated in the mouth. Some doctors like to use IvoClean on the inside of an all zirconia crown to uh, get what they feel is a fresher bonding surface and while you're certainly uh, welcome to do that with Ceramer Crown and Bridge Cement. It's definitely not a mandatory step. We're going to seat the crown into the mouth and push it down with some finger pressure to ensure that it's sat down all the way. Have the patient bite down on a cotton roll for another minute. And here at the three minute mark, uh, Ceramer Cement is in its gel state and it can be very easily teased off from around the tooth with an Explorer. Uh, the ease of cleanup with the cement uh, is really one of the biggest features and when you're able to take a, an entire wall of cement like the buckle wall off like that in a gel phase it's a big benefit from this cement. Putting a knot into dental floss and cleaning out the inner proximal pieces can also be done as you work your way towards the five minute point at which point the cement will be completely set and the patient can be dismissed. This is the kind of simplicity that we expect out of resin ionomer cement. But this product is far superior because it's not a resin ionomer, it's a calcium aluminate that integrates into dentistry, seals margins, and, and the story is so much deeper in depth of how these crystals materialize and build onto the dentin and enamel substructures at the margins if there is enamel present. So with that as a basis, so you've got this what I would call futuristic cement which many cements will start to copy there's no question and how do we best apply it well let me just show you a key learning tip tonight in most of my audiences most people don't realize that zirconia polished is far less abrasive far less abrasive than any porcelain on the market feldspathic or non or any dilithium. So the best thing you could do on a worn dentition is make a zirconia lingual surface and veneer it with porcelain. This is what I'm doing for the majority of my interior bridges. I'm going to show you that. And many of my posterior bridges, if I'm not doing an implant, they're monolithic with labial surfaces that are veneered in porcelain. This is huge, and I don't have time to go into my full day course, but you polish zirconia with zirconia polishers that are different than porcelain polishers. So this is my world. I don't see children in my practice. I can't stand them. I love adults. I have kids at home. That's enough. And what I can tell you is you look at this patient. This is typical, worn natural dentition. This tells me you're going to do a minimal prep one and a half millimeters on the buckle okay you know in depth reduction the same business but lingual reduction is a half a millimeter why you only need zirconia you don't need a porcelain over the zirconia this is the tooth in protrusive showing maximum opening 
which is no more than three quarters of a millimeter. And here's the beauty. You're just gonna, you're not gonna bomb this in. You're gonna get the contacts cleared, occlusion cleared, and you're simply gonna cement this with Ceramer. Now here's the beauty, another progressive dentist moment. You don't need, you don't silenate this, you don't prime it. You don't even have to use IvoClean on this. And IvoClean's a wonderful material because IvoClean can clean zirconia or Emacs. If you're not using Ceramer, you better be using IvoClean. That's my thought. But for zirconia with Ceramer, you don't have to at all use IvoClean. You just clean it out. You can micro etch it, rinse it out, air dry, and cement with Ceramer, and we'll get into it. So this is a case, Linda's 56 years old. She could not afford full mouth rehab. I couldn't open her vertically. This is my world. I don't have $80,000 full mouth clients walking in like I used to. It's the real world. So what do I do here? I bring her back into my office and I want to show you this. This is her. Severe wear. Look at the severe wear in the anterior. You're going to do Emacs? Are you kidding me? Or you're going to do PFMs with metal linguals? I'd much rather do zirconia on the lingual with porcelain laminated on the buckle because she could not afford full mouth rehab. Her lower teeth, severe perio, didn't want to have implants, one to two mobility. Canines were poor abutments for a bridge. They're already endodontically treated with posts. Terrible abutments for a six unit bridge. So. My option was to splint her lower teeth. They were nice and ugly and yellow, and she didn't want to keep them ugly and yellow. So I made her temporaries, put wings on the temporaries to see if we could get the mobility decrease, and of course we did. And she said she'd prefer to save her teeth for as long as possible. And this is my real world type of patient. So let me explain this to you. This is a case where I prepped all four interior teeth. They were basically composite teeth. The linguals are prepared for only a half a millimeter of clearance, which is great. And the buckles are prepared in a two-plane reduction for a millimeter and a half. So I'm basically saving her teeth from endo because I only have to prepare the linguals a half a millimeter. Let me say it again, a half a millimeter. I bring her in for a try-in, not a delivery, of the four anterior crowns. I do any adjustments. It goes back to the lab for final glazing and, you know, final refinements. I do, and again, I do always a try-in. Why? I don't want the patient to be disappointed if it has to go back to the lab. So here we are. Let me get rid of this arrow. All my lingual surfaces are zirconia. I don't know why my lab stained it, but whatever. And all four of the buccal surfaces are all laminated. I've already tried the case in. Everything's ready to go. This is another key point for all my dentists out there. When I try in this case, I only book a half an hour. When I deliver this case, I am in that chair less than 20 minutes. Why? I don't have to bond. I don't have to do anything except basically try them in one final time, make sure everything fits meticulously, load them with Ceramer, and clean them. And my assistant's still going to be the one to clean them. So here they are. They're loaded with Ceramer cement. It was one double capsule and one single capsule. That's all it was. We place them fully into place. And let me just show you. So the cement is placed. And I want to see enough so that the cement is extruding 360 degrees. Again, I've already adjusted the occlusion contact. They're just coming back for a final delivery. I'm in there no less, I, I promise, I'm sorry, no more than a half an hour because this is such a wonderful, simplified procedure. Clean them up, ended up bonding. I would never crown a canine because if you can see here, the, the canine only had what I would say is severe class five. So I bonded the canine and then we went to the lower. The lower I did with a cordless impression from Densply, so no packing cord. Here you can see the 
three crowns splinted together with a lingual splint that will be going on to the canines that were already crowned root canal post and cord. Another must-have, and you can ask me questions afterwards, is Shofu's new camera. What I can do is you can take it with a certain aspect. This is a touchscreen camera, so light. You can, you can literally wipe it with cavity cleanser. It's just an incredible camera, and this is in the isolated shade. So I'm showing you how close our shade is. And I'll walk you through. Here's our before. Let's see if this will work. Here's our before. Here's our after, and here's our wings. I did put the cement on the wings. It's irrelevant because they're cemented to porcelain crowns. But this is the re real world. How do I make a 56-year-old look natural with four beautiful front teeth that don't stand out like they're Hollywood white? Matching three lower anterior crowns splinted. Oh, mobility now is less than a half. Exactly conservative dentistry in my eyes because that's what she wanted. Cementing of a, of a all zirconia bridge. Just to show you a little couple ideas here, let me remove this. This is an Itero model. I had plenty of occlusal clearance because I took off an old PFM bridge. She did not want an implant. And this is my next learning pearl tonight. What do you do about contacts? First thing I do is I always adjust the context before I get into occlusion. Take a piece of articulating paper. I really prefer this over the Sharpies. And I take a small little piece of articulating paper. I place it in between the contact. And if it's too tight, there's my mark right there. Right there. I'll take a finishing composite diamond burr, usually a yellow grit, medium grit. Adjust it slightly. Floss again if it's too tight. Put the contact paper back in, readjust it again and again so that my contacts are perfect. Once my contacts are ideal, then I test occlusion, take my bite wing x-ray, make sure I'm ready to cement. And the cementation process, all I'm going to do is cleanse the interior of this zirconia bridge, mild micro etching, rinsing, water cleanup. You don't even need IvoClean with it. Again, polishing. This is Shermer's Polishers, Shofu Shermer Polishers. I'm going to polish composite with, I'm sorry, polish porcelain with porcelain finishers. I'm going to polish zirconia with zirconia polishers. You must know this. Zirconia polishers and Emacs polishers are different than porcelain polishers. In this case, if I'm polishing porcelain, I'm going to use final polishing porcelain polishers. So just to show you, this is IvoClean. It's made by IvoClar. And if you want to clean out the bridge with it, it's fine. What you'll do is you'll place the IvoClean in it for 20 seconds, rinse it out, air dry it, and it's ready to be cemented. This is the final bridge. Now, you're going to ask me, what do we do about teeth? Routinely what I do is I use Bisco's 2% chlorhexidine. I soak the teeth in 2% chlorhexidine. I want to disinfect them, remove any bacteria. And then basically what I'll do is I'll take wet gauze, wet gauze, and place it over the teeth, removing the 2% chlorhexidine. Remember, this is a hydrophilic cement. So the teeth can be mildly moist. I'm not worried about it. I never air dry these teeth. My patients Unless I don't like the patient, then I'll air dry them. But you don't want to air dry them. You want to leave them mildly moist. So the cement is placed into the crown, mildly moist tooth environment. You'll cement the bridge in place. You wait three minutes, floss thread, pull your floss down and out, clean your margins, patient's going home. Emacs. Same thing. I'm not going to use, I'm not going to bond in an Emacs. I haven't bonded an Emacs in four years unless it's underprepared, which we won't get into tonight. With Emacs, I do Ivo clean. I do Ivo clean them. Um, you know, you can use phosphoric acid, but I'm going to Ivo clean the inside of my crowns here 20 seconds. 
I'm using GC forceps to remove and take them on and off. Again, a must-have product. Then I'm going to go through the same process. I've Ivo cleaned it. While I'm while my assistant's Ivo cleaning it, I'm putting 2% chlorhexidine on the tooth. Probably no more 30 seconds than 30 seconds to a minute. And then I'm going to take wet gauze, place it over the tooth. My assistant goes through the activation, the trituration, the rotation of the cup, and places the material inside the Emax crown. You wait three minutes, the cement just peels off, floss down and out. This is what it looks like, the crown. Here's your Emax crown. Oh my goodness, you don't see the white opaque cement. Why? Because you've prepared the tooth for Emax. One and a half millimeter preparation pretty much all the way around, one millimeter shoulder margin, and you don't see the white. Have many of you taken off Emax crowns out there that are bonded into place? Are you kidding me? You know how hard they are to take off? You literally have to re-prepare the tooth. And where's the tooth? Where's the cement? Routinely in the past when I take out an Emax crown, I can see my gouges. I'm just hoping I don't see that little red bleeding point. So imagine taking out an Emax crown or a zirconia crown with a white, opaque-ish type cement. So, and I've done three of them. I've had to take three crowns out because of open contacts of distalization of upper second molars. When I remove an Emax crown or a zirconia crown cemented with serumer, you literally cut through the crown and there you see your little whitish cement. I love that. I don't want the cement to be translucent and match the tooth. I want it to be white so I can see it if I ever have to cut off a crown because you certainly don't see it when you put on a traditional Emax crown that's been prepared properly. So this is, the, this is the crown five minutes later. This is the crown four weeks later. Notice the gingival tissue. This is the crown two years later. Now don't you love this? Look at this. Different camera that I was trying out, not my favorite. Look at this, beautiful margins. Patient's got constant acid attacks. Loves to drink her soft drinks. Oh nice, demineralization right here. Nothing going on around my crown. Got to tell you, that's the key part about this. Alkaline technology, calcium aluminate. That's where we got to be going. Anterior crowns. I got to go fast because my time's limited. So let me just show you before and afters. Here's the two anterior crowns, seven and eight. Patient's already been tried in. Now I'm going to deliver them. Texturizing has been beautiful, done by the lab, Itero models. Get rid of that. There's your white opaque cement. If you have prepared these teeth, like traditional Emacs, these were two OPFMs with one and a half millimeter, um, you know, preparing the incisal, the buckle the right way, you're not going to see the cement. So I'm just showing you, I'm even doing anterior Emacs with this product. Here's the texturizing of the facial surface. Very natural. Two-week follow-up. Look at those margins. Totally biocompatible tissue. This is two years later with Serumer. Why am I going to bond? Why am I going to go through a bonding when I can use a cement that integrates into two structure and seals it? Okay, so let me just show you Tracy's case, and I won't even get to my last case because we're going to run out of time, but I just want, this is real world too, I didn't have room for two implants, so I'm going to show you my upper bicuspid molar dilemma. This is my first attempt, I do a try and I've taken the impression, and if you look at this, let's see if we can get this. It's a poor, the whole thing is ugly from my lab at this point. This, this doesn't even look like a tooth. Let me give, show you a different angle. If you look at this, this looks like a, I don't know what this looks like. But you can see the gap here. It just doesn't look natural. It's short. It looks like just basically, I, I have no idea what this looks like. It wasn't acceptable. So I send pictures. 
I send it back to my lab in California. Okay. So it goes back to my lab in California. There it goes. They see the pictures. They send it back to me. It comes back to me. Great. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. I try it in again. Now we're getting close, except look at this. Look at the shade. This is again with the Shofu camera. Look at this shade. It looks gray. It's translucent. I don't like it, but I like what we're doing because I'm trying to show them what I want. I want it to look like two bicuspids. Goes back to the lab. Comes back from the lab. And I try it in and everything looks great. So now I'm going to show you, I think, the only way to cement crowns today. It's implant crowns. Implant crowns. This is a product from Kettenbach. It's, a, it's like a VPS alternative material. And what I do is I inject the inside of the crown, the implant crown, with this material. So here's what I want to show you. I take this material. And it just comes in, you can get it in a large package, like, as you know, for whatever. I like to place a lubricant on the inside of my implant crown. The lubricant of choice for me is a product called Wink from Pulp Dent. And so this is what I do. I've tried in my implant, in my implant crown. I love it. I've adjusted the occlusion. I love it. So what do I do next? I place Wink on the inside of this. And then what I do is I, I literally inject Silgenate, and there are other companies who make wonderful materials. I inject it into the crown. I wait three minutes. I pull out my abutment. I pull it out. That's what I've got now. I, my lab could make this. My lab's going to charge me 26 bucks. I can do this for probably two bucks. I'm a dentist. So now this is what I do. First off, look at the emergence profile here. If I leave any cement, that's my worry. Now, even though Serumer is incredibly biocompatible, I don't want to leave cement. So this is just what I'm doing. And so what, after the trying, I've torqued the implant down. I place Teflon tape over the screw. I place a material like Tempit, Light Cure It. I try the crown in one more time. I'm more than happy to send the entire program It'll be recorded if you need the PDF. I'll send that to you too. But so at this point, I've already got my my alginate my alginate alternative silginate alternative abutment. There you can see the two unit. That's now one unit. I place the cement inside the crown. Not a lot, but enough. I place the crown over my little abutment. I remove the crown. I then remove all the cement. I just wipe off any excess cement on the crown and the majority of my cement is deep internally and very little around my margins. I want everybody to understand this. You don't want to leave cement. So I'm placing Serumer in the crown, placing my pseudo abutment into the crown pulling my abutment down and this is what I've got left remove the excess cement you got two minutes of work time okay at that point can't believe I don't have the final there and I apologize at that point I'm gonna go back I think I should be able to go back all I'm going to do is and I apologize for not having it I take this into the patient's mouth I blast it with water any residual cement I will remove with water. I use a very thick floss. My assistant's holding it down, and I remove all the cement. I then wait the three minutes for the full set. I'll take my Explore around, and I know I've comfortably cemented this patient. Last, got to show you this. It's too cool not to show you. This is a 73-year-old patient for implant number four. This is the final result. But I'm going to tell you, these become so tricky, these implants themselves. So if this is your final, how do you get to this final? So I want to show you this case. 
This is a, an ankylos uh, implant, zirconia abutment, and there are a lot of things I wouldn't do today on this. First thing, got to share this with you. This whole area is now in metal. I don't like any interlocking or locking parts that are in zirconia. They worry me. So I really like metal. I like my zirconia on top. It's called kind of a hybrid approach. But if you look at this, her tissue level is where this blue line is. If I cement this, I am never going to get out, ever going to get out the cement. So this is a combination, screw down, cement down. She's in ortho, and I'm going to explain this to you even in further detail with the following pictures. When you decide on cementing or screwing down a final case, the first question you have to go is, do you have enough height for retention to cement a restoration with cleansable margins? If you don't have enough interocclusal height, which is when the patient bites down, to have enough retention that you have cleansable margins, you cannot do a cement down. I've seen so many horrible outcomes from implants due to periimplantitis where the margins are three millimeters subgingival, they could never get out the cement, and you have a problem. So I have the patient bite down. I want to make sure I've either got enough height to have what I call cleansable margins, no more than a half millimeter subgingival, and if I don't have enough interocclusal height, routinely I'm going to have to do a screw down. In this case, I did not have enough height. So in this case, we did a screw down that I also cemented, and I'll explain that. She was in ortho, 73 years old, a beautiful woman with no height. You can see the interocclusal height. So if you don't understand this, I want to explain this. And I apologize because I'll run five minutes late. You can see when she's biting down, you'll see it at another angle. I just don't have enough height here. So I've torqued the implant down, the abutment down. I confirmed that on an x-ray, but my margins are way subgingival. If I cemented this, I would never be able to clean it. But if I cement it, it's the only way I could get retention, so I'm going to do a combination approach. There's my interocclusal clearance. So now what I've done is my abutment is in place. Now I'm going to try in the crown. So it's two pieces. I'm doing a two-piece system. Now imagine trying to do this in one piece. If the crown and the abutment were all in one piece and the implant has been placed buccally or lingually with any kind of slant, by the time you adjust your contacts, your path of draw is going to be off. It's not going to work out. So I want to make sure my contacts are adjusted afterwards. So I want to go back and just basically say this to you. I will adjust the contacts to fit intimately over my abutment. And once the whole system works in two pieces, <coughs> I'm cementing it in one piece. In this case, I'm going to clean my abutment outside of the mouth. As you can see with IvoClean, outside the mouth, I've unscrewed it. And I'm cleaning the inside of the crown with IvoClean. I'll rinse it for 20 seconds and air dry. Here's the critical aspect. I'm going to place Teflon tape into the access hole to protect the screw. Right, this is kind of confusing. And then I'm going to cement with Ceramer my crown to my abutment, but I protected the screw hole. Once that's all done, I then go in, remove the Teflon tape. Now I have access to my screw hole. I torque down the crown into place. My margins, I've already cleaned off all the cement outside the mouth. So now I'm torquing down the crown, placing a final glass ionomer over the seal. And there's my final crown. So just to let you understand, I'm using the serum or cement. I'm cementing the crown outside the mouth and then screwing the entire crown into place. And then we remove the ortho appliance. I know it's a lot. What I have to tell you is 
you'd have to show me a cement out there for implants that is as biocompatible as this cement. I just don't think it's out there. When I look at the retention, the calcium alumina technology, the sealing and everything else, for my Emax crowns or my zirconia crowns or zirconia uh, to porcelain crowns, all these are just wonderful benefits. And as part of Progressive Magazine's, I'll call it um, uniqueness, if you can utilize a cement in many formats that allows you to get superior long-term results, but yet far more efficiently than a resin cement, I think this fits into meticulously what the editors of Progressive are all about.